Hello and welcome back. For any programming language, control flow statements are very important. Control flow statements are nothing but loops and conditions like for loop, while loop, if statement, break, continue, these kinds of statements. They are very important and Python provides us with those you know, important control, control flow statements. So let us try to understand while loop first. And along with while loop, we'll understand what is multiple assignment and what is indentation and how, we, how, how is that useful or important in Python. So if you see this here, a comma b is equal to 0 comma 1 I have assigned. Here a gets assigned with 0, b gets assigned with 1. This is called as multiple assignment. Python supports this. This is as equal as a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. If you assign a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1, the same thing as a comma b is equal to 0 comma 1. This is called as multiple assignment. The next thing is we have started a while loop here. To denote that the while loop started, we are using a colon here. So this colon indicates that the while loop has started. And the statements belonging to while loop should be delimited with one tab. In languages like Java, we will use curly braces. Let me explain that. Let me take a screenshot and explain that. So in, in languages like Java, we may have to write like while b less than 10 and then inside curly braces we may have to do print uh, a and a comma b is equal to b comma a plus b. Like this you need to do. This is actually you know the indentation or the, 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 the scope of while loop. The curly braces actually define the scope of while loop and the statements belonging to while loop. But in Python, we start the loop or any, you know, any block with co columns and then the statements belonging to that loop will be indented with tab. So if you don't give tabs properly, the ID will, you know, show a red colored, you know, whatever the statements. So let us see, let us see how it actually, if you don't maintain the indentation, what happens? See that? I haven't maintained the indentation, so it is showing print in red, red color. If I execute this, it will say that unexpected indent. So indentation should be properly maintained. So here, a tab is one indentation, okay? So for while loop, the any loop, not, not just for while loop, any block, the colon is the beginning and then the tab specifies that all those statements in one tab belong to that particular block. So the next thing or the most important thing about while loop is while this b is less than 10 or while this condition is satisfied or the while this condition is true, right? When you do b less than 10, it actually gives you a boolean state, boolean value. Let us try to see this. b is equal to I have given maybe 8 and then if I try to print b less than 10 it gives you true it is a boolean expression while the boolean expression is true the loop will continue if you give the b a value 11 then it will give you false right or if you give 10 also it will give false because 10 is not less than 10 it is less than or equal to 10 so while this condition is true the loop will continue. What, what is the loop? Here we have assigned a to a, 0 to a and 1 to b. I am checking whether b is less than 10 or not. What is the value of b? 1. It is less than 10. That means it is true. Like that. So the condition is true. So it will go into the loop and try to print a and then once after printing a, a will be assigned with b and b will be assigned with a plus b. When b value is less than 10, it is going into the loop and then printing a and then assigning 1 to a and 0 plus 1 to b. And then again going back in a loop and trying to see whether b is still less than 10. 
B is one, so it is still less than ten. So it is going to print A and then assign A is equal to one because B is one, and B is equal to one plus one two. So it is increment. So it is actually doing a Fibonacci series kind of a you know stuff here. So that is a while loop. While loop actually looks at the condition. When the condition is true, the loop will continue to execute. Next statement. Next control statement is if. If is a statement, not a loop. If is a statement and not a loop. We need to remember. If a condition is true, it will execute the statements in the block inside that if block. If not, it will go to else statement. If you say else if E L I F is else if. If the statement is not true, if you want to you know compare another condition, then you need to use else if. Even then, it is not. You need to compare with another condition. You need to use else if. Ultimately, you need to use you no know, maybe else. Okay. So here we have used int of input. Input is a method in Python which takes input from keyboard, and we are converting that input into integer, and then checking whether the integer inputted is less than zero or not. If it is, we are going to print a negative number. Negative change it to zero. We are changing that x value to zero, and then if it is zero, we are printing zero. If it is one, we are printing one. Another number is typed. We are printing other number. Let us execute this sentence. The input method will actually take input from the keyboard. Let me type seven here, and then enter. Other number it is saying. Let me execute this again. This is these are statements. These are not loops. So I need to execute again. I am executing again. If I give zero, it is printing zero. So it came in and checked it. If it is less than zero, no. Else, if equal to zero, yes. So it printed the zero like that. Okay. So if statement and else if statements should be written like this. For loop. So for loop actually it takes a list of values or a compound data structure, you know, list of values, and then it iterates through. When you, you know here I have assigned cat window and door stopper in a list and assigned it to a, a, a variable called words and then I am trying to loop through or iterate through the words. So if I say for x in words, it actually takes cat first into x and then there is a if statement here. If the condition is satisfied, it will actually print. Len method will give you length of the string. So it cat has came in length is equal to three and which is not equal to six. So it is not printing it. Window the length is six. The next the next word x is going to get is window and the length of x is six and it's going to print it because the length is equal to six. Here we are using equal to operator double equal to comparison operator. Please, if you use one equal to it is assignment. If you use double equal to, it's a comparison Boolean operator. So it is checking whether it is equal to or not. If the condition is true, then it's going to print the value. So the third uh, string in the list is door stopper, and the door stopper, the length is greater than six, so it's not equal to six, so it's not printing. So this for loop is actually iterating through, and the if statement is actually checking the condition and you know printing the value. So the the print method is printing the value. So that's how you can use for for loop. If you have to iterate through a loop, iterate iterate through a list and update the list itself, you definitely need to use a slice of the list. So here the for loop is actually using a slice of a list to iterate through the list, and then the list is being updated. If you execute this, what happened here? The words of the slice from beginning till end will get all the cat, window, and door stopper. And if the length is greater than six, it is inserting at the zeroth index. So is cat greater than six? No, it is not going to get executed. This words dot insert will not get executed. Window is the greater than six? No, it is also here also the words dot insert will not get executed. Door stopper is definitely greater than six. The length of the door stopper is definitely greater than six. So the words dot insert will get executed. So at the zeroth index, it actually added 
the door stopper again because at the third iteration the condition got satisfied and the third value got added at the first place so you are we are actually looping through the list and trying to update the list itself so in that case you should definitely use a slice to iterate through if you don't use it it may go into an infinite loop okay try to take out this and run the you know whatever the statements here and it will go into an infinite loop so be careful while trying to iterate through a list and trying to update the same list you definitely need to take a slice of it to iterate through and now we need to understand a built in function range and then we will actually try to use for loop to iterate through range we will separately learn some of the built in functions in coming classes but range is needed here so i am just introducing the range method the range method will create numbers from the beginning till end so this is the start and this is the end so if you try to print range it will give you range object but if you want to see what is inside range right you need to actually iterate through so if you give 0 comma 10 or only 10 in the range method it's going to work same okay so in range method you have you know step also we can actually start from 0 and end at 16 step 3 so it's going to add 3 to the initial value and add 3 to the next value add 3 to the next value like that so it will step through okay and then you, even if you put 15 here 15 will not be printed right till 12 only it's going to traverse through our you know, generate range method when you use step the last number will be ignored even here when you don't use any start stop and st start and step it is ignoring the last index because the last value because the value generation starts from zero okay so that's the range method and you can use len method to look at the length of the uh, length of the you know, whatever the data structure so here the words is the list and then we are actually trying to print the length of it okay and then you want to see the index of a value index of a value in a list you may have to use range of len of words okay the len of words will give you three okay this will give three and then you are actually trying to range of three is zero one two you take 0 and print 0 and word of 0, 1, print 1 and word of 1, 2, print 1 and word of 2, sorry, print 2 and word of 2. See that? So you can do the same thing with the enumerate method also. So why we are trying to understand all these methods is, you definitely need to go through the documentation and see all the available methods so that you can write efficient code and, you know, write code faster. So enumerate method will automatically do it. When you pass a list and to the enumerator, it will actually extract the index and value by default. No need to write range, len of, of words and whatnot. Okay. The next things are break and continue. A break statement will actually break the loop. A for loop can actually run from 2 to 10. But we are actually putting a break statement here. If the i value is greater than 5, we are breaking it. So it's going to break and will come out of the loop. So you can you now interrupt a loop and come out of the loop based on your condition or the requirement. And continue statement. When the condition is satisfied, it will not execute the next statements and go back. If you see this here, I am trying to you know generate numbers from 2 to 10. So I am trying to see whether the number mod 2 is equal to 0 or not that means is it an even number or not if it is an even number i am printing and then i am going back and trying to see the next number whether it is even number or not i am seeing if the condition is not satisfied i will just print this print statement if the condition is satisfied i will go back and check only you know if you run this statement it is printing found even number found a number 3 found even number 4 found a number 5 found even number 6, found a number 7 like that. If you take out this continue statement, let us see what happens. See this? If 
for every for loop you know in every iteration it is printing it is actually checking whether the number is even number or not printing it and then it is printing the number also see this found even number and printing the number this is for the first iteration in the second iteration the if statement was not satisfied so the even number statement did not got printed but the found a number got printed in the third iteration four it took four is an even number and then it it actually printing this print statement also right to avoid printing the statement you can do continue what happens is if the condition is satisfied don't execute the next statements go back to the loop and execute the loop statement that's what is happening here so this is break and continue so these are the control flow statements present in python and we are covering the most important concepts in python which are useful for a data scientist thank you